Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. love his reaction i reckon uh g'day everybody welcome to another exciting episode i reckon Ange, who's just joined us must be sitting there sweating on this episode like he's a pee within the first millisecond how good is that so there you go greg's joined us as well all the regular um contributors are all back in town we've got four people with us already absolutely fantastic believe it or not it's wednesday night and it is wet and miserable again it must be us if it wasn't celebrities passing away between uh episodes it's now crappy weather so uh hopefully that's an incentive to not go out uh on the town even though there's no curfew but actually to sit here with us we've got a lot to cover off tonight it's a big weekend being nerdy so um uh without further ado i have to introduce my lads lads how are we tonight most excellent dude <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally uh, radical dude all right so we got a bit of a natter uh something i was actually uh quality control of these things is variable so i have to make them in, okay yeah well that's true i agree with you aaron the quality control is actually quite uh um questionable on a lot of occasions but uh yes i think in some cases they don't care about how the discs come out or not all right let we need to move on so here's something i've actually been watching westworld uh season three just finished it recently um it's a completely different uh series to seasons one and two and it just made me think about the whole concept of ai artificial intelligence and this is a bit of a philosophical discussion actually so we're not going to be pinpointing movies and tv shows specifically but i'm going to be asking people out there the currently in the real world artificial intelligence is sort of not there and we see it a lot in the movies and the tv series uh about what it does and as i see it AI in the future is intended to do one of two things based on the movies and TV shows we've got. So you can either have the AI that is intending to protect humanity, okay, and they they could be computers or robots. So in the examples I've got here, like Colossus from Colossus the Forbin Project, which is probably the first time we had a worldwide dominating computer, Vicky from iRobot, the master control program from Tron, and I can't pronounce this very well, Rio Boehm from Westworld. That's the Thing, trying to predict everybody's future right and then of course you've got the artificial intelligence which is trying to destroy everybody right get rid of humanity because we're a pain in the ass you know we're just like taking up space and of course the examples there are for skynet it's the most obvious one from terminator series uh dolores funny enough from westworld she wants to get rid of humanity and of course in blade runner 2049 the right replicants are now starting to turn up against people in a real life sense, trying to predict in the future when AI finally becomes a thing, whether it be as a computer or as a robot or whatever, what do you guys think um, the idea being that they're trying to achieve by creating artificial intelligence? I have a theory, but I'm going to pass it on to you two first. Why do you think you're trying to create AI and what is the benefit of it, if there is a benefit? Yeah, Pierce, I'll start with you. Yeah, it's a... It's a very large question really because yep. there are probably multiple reasons why you you create an ai you know obviously um currently we have robots in the workforce because manual labor is is getting heavier and harder and, and it's quicker to manufacture things in that sense uh later on if we make uh robots droids or whatever you want to call them um, as helpers so that you know the sick and the elderly have have those or you know babysitters or whatever the case is uh, they'll be there for that reason with only performing specific duties. Uh, but look, in theory, I think later on, like everything, they'll turn. They may turn on themselves, they may turn on humans, but if they're built through what we know and what we've done over our history of life for thousands of years, um, and we turn on each other on the drop of a hat, you know, religions and wars and all that sort of stuff then potentially they'll think that who knows one droid might turn around and say well i'm better than you because i do this and you don't do that and that's when a war could occur uh, or they could just hate humans because they they become smarter than us and eradicate us in that sense because in the version i'll get to you in a sec jeffro regarding colossus and vicky both of them 
Uh, they're both large computers and um, their idea being that because humanity is self-destructive, it's the AI that will control everything that happens with humanity and to eliminate war and, and to keep everybody in check. But of course, that comes at a price. You know, there, there, there's a lot of um, uh, liberties and a lot of freedom, a lot of freedoms that we currently enjoy get removed because the idea being that everybody's got to be kept in check. But by the same token, it's it's under like fear of force uh, or, or, or domination. And uh, so there's a school of thought to say, well, it could work in one hand, but not work so well in another, depending on your perspective. Um, and I think that's sort of, in obviously in the real world, that's what you'd be trying to achieve. You're not going to be trying to achieve Skynet where uh, you know, humanities kind of get destroyed. Jeffro, what do you reckon, man? I think a really good example of this one would be uh, The Matrix, because, I mean, essentially it keeps us all happy. It puts us in a... Uh, uh, a dream world where there's uh, everything that's going right and, and we all love it and then all that. But in, you know, true fact, you know, we're basically all in these, um, these shells, you know, sort of uh, hooked up to tubes and stuff. So, you know, I can, I can see where maybe artificial intelligence believes that it's doing us a favor, but, you know, I guess, you know, their idea of uh, free will is basically to, to, you know, take it away from us because they know what they're, they're doing. So, yeah, I mean, it is it is scary that this big brother sort of concept amongst computers could actually happen. Uh, the problem with the Matrix thing, it's an actually an alien species that I think have controlled and you know, created the Matrix. So it's not strictly oh. an AI, um, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. Um, I like this comment. I, I, this is interesting. So Thomas said, the, oh, hang on, wrong one, sorry. Uh, Thomas said it's a long way off. Uh, it can't be reality yet. And then Claire said this, and I agree with Claire, AI does exist. It's the sentient AI that we're sort of discussing here. And the key thing to think of, going back to what Thomas said, is saying it's a long way off. Well, it doesn't have to be a long way off. You've got to remember the way technology works, you think of things that did not exist technologically 30 years ago that we have today. And back then, 30 years ago, it would have been considered like science fiction, funnily enough. It's like, hey, that's mm. never going to happen. So... There are people dicking around with this stuff now. I mean, we, we sort of know it. It's a question of how far they want to take it and why they want to take it where they want to take it. And is it for the betterment of humanity or is it for something else? And now I have a reason, I have a theory as to where the, a lot of this is all coming from, but that's the reason why I was sort of keen, keen to think, uh, see what you guys have to say. Now, there's a few comments here. Um, I, I, here we go from Michelle. I think I have no idea what this should be. While safeguards are putting AI is a good thing, it's when they aren't enough and AI is when they can't get around the rules. Because in science fiction, obviously, you've got to have the antagonist. You can't just, it can't all be just great all the time. I mean, the computers have got to go off the rails a bit and like be bad against people. But when you sit and think about it, it's almost like the equivalent of a communist government to a large degree. If you want to look at it, well, there's something that's an overlord of everything. Okay. But in this case, it's not. A real person it's actually a machine and of course the machine the idea being the machine is impartial as to why it does what it does now interestingly enough uh, i know a lot of people out there there are a number of people who don't aren't interested in the dune uh universe in the dune universe computers and ai are not permitted they're not allowed right there are no computers at all right that's why you have mentats which are the human computers and the idea being of course that once upon a time computers got so powerful that ai got so powerful it started to destroy humanity so they got outlawed right there's a there's a whole series of books about it the butlerian jihad so there's a school of thought to say that having an ai a real one is actually not a good thing at all um and that humanity should be allowed to work out its own pros and cons and whatever happens to us, at least we're doing it to ourselves. But you could also ask and say, well, okay, what if a machine was an overlord and just keeping check on everything? Would that actually work out better? And I think in some cases it would work well, in other cases uh, not so. Um, lads, what do you think? Am I on the right track or not? Well, I'm, I'm tending to think that uh, we're getting uh, things like Apple Siri where you can ask it anything and it actually responds. I mean, the fact that, you know, if you said, I can speak to computer and it will answer me 20 years ago, you would have said, nah, that's that's crazy. That is that is science fiction. And here but we that, are, we're actually talking to computers now and Siri is a pretty smart AI. Uh, I'd almost think, well, if Siri went down and collapsed, got eaten by a virus, how many people would not be able to cope without their Siri? 
So, uh, yeah, a very it's, point. it's happening now. I, I think with that, though, that's not really AI necessarily because it's a, it's a it still runs with the binary. You know, you ask a question and it races through a set of responses that gives it to you. If it doesn't understand mm. the question, it tells you, I don't understand, rephrase it, which is no different. If you look at, say, Star Trek or Bicentennial Man, you've got AIs that are sentient that eventually want to become human. You know, um, the, the, the Bionicle, uh, Bionicle Man, yeah. No, sorry, Bicentennial Man. He wanted to become human. That was the Robin Williams character. And Data wants to become human. So they want to become human. So maybe it's the programming that wants them to evolve. And if you program them a certain way for, I don't know, military application or something along those lines, you might get the Overlord and you might get the Skynet and you might get all that sort of stuff. But if you create it with humanity behind it, maybe it wants to become more human. Um. The comment with Siri, uh, Siri would work if it learned from you, right? Once it started to learn, then that's where that's what Claire was saying earlier about the sentience thing, right? It actually understands it learns, uh, which currently I don't think it can do. I must admit, there's always room for a bit of humor in this. I do like this from uh, Colin. Yeah, the Matrix for us has been stuck at home. Uh, yes, with the lockdown. I oh, actually thought that was actually quite funny. Um, what uh, there was, did I put AI on a container ship? What I think. Uh, and I thought I'd just chuck this in there because um, I'm of the opinion that there are people, and of course these things require a lot of money to be developed, so there's people somewhere, it's not us, not anybody watching this show, no, there's people out there who are trying to develop artificial intelligence uh, for the, and this Westworld touches on this actually, and this is where I got, the, I was looking at that and thinking, I think there's more to this than what it meets the eye. The idea being that as mortal beings, we only live for a certain period of time. And if you have, uh, and there are plenty of individuals like this in the world, all the money, all the power, all the thing in the world, no matter what you've got, you're still mortal. There's going to come a point where you're not here anymore. And I'm of the opinion that what people are trying, certain people are trying to do is find a way to transfer their consciousness from their bodies into something else. And so they can continue to live on, right? Because if you're saying, I want to achieve this in my lifetime but it won't occur for another 150 years the only way i can do that is if i can actually transfer who i am right over to something else now whether it be an artificial body or a machine or a computer or whatever else and westworld uh, is based on that so uh, the idea that you can actually make copies of people and i think that's actually for some people a lot a, a goal something they're trying to achieve and of course you know clearly it's a very difficult thing to do because it doesn't exist yet. AI doesn't exist in the sentient sense that Claire was discussing earlier. And I'm of the opinion that's what some people are attempting to do because they've got all the stuff they want to do, but they're not going to live long enough to see it come to fruition. Mm. Dude, you want to say something? Yeah, that's, I think, a little different to the, to the sentient being sort of thing because the sentient being is a robot that learns and creates. We're just transferring a, a human consciousness or brain, whatever you want to do, into a robotic yeah. type. So it's... it's I see what okay. you're saying, and yes, that's a that's what we all want to do. Who wouldn't want to live, you know, potentially pain free or able to do things that they could never do um, for whatever restrictions you have now? But the AI, the sentient AI, is essentially you create a robot, and I'm just trying to think if I've got anything here. No, I've got nothing here that looks like a robot um, that thinks for itself and continues on for itself. R2 and 3PO, classic examples of sentient beings you know a uh, 3po essentially was just a, a protocol droid but looking at the fact that he learned over the years and even though he had his his um memory wiped he still learned certain things r2 knew what to do he wouldn't just sit there and go oh i'm in trouble he would you know go off and help or he would go and change this or he would do whatever the case is that's the idea of sentient now the limitation of sentient knowledge i think that's a different thing yeah, okay. Um, R2 and 3PO, yes, and possibly no, because they are based on programming, and they actually do mention in the movies a number, so I'm not programmed for this, I'm not programmed to yeah. impersonate a deity, I'm not pro so they're still limited by programming. Uh, so, yes, they are, and no, they're not. Um, I agree with you, Senti is not based on being able to learn, it's being based on self-awareness, but I do think they go hand in hand. I think if you're self-aware, then you can learn. So, and I know it's the old, I think, therefore I am, uh, type scenario um, so that's an interesting one because there is that 
other alternative where you could create an AI and the first thing you do, and I think you mentioned earlier in PS about saying, oh, it has no requirement for humanity, so therefore humanity should be destroyed. And that's what happens with Skynet and, uh, and all, the all the rest of it. And, of course, that's the risk you take when you produce these things and, you know, kill or destroy the creator. Or, and then, of course, the AI has to find a way to replicate itself as well. So there's other scenarios and, and TV shows and movies that uh, to deal with that. Um, it's sort of what I, where I was coming from was trying to work out if it existed and it was given global powers. And I use Colossus as an example. It was the first time in the 70s when a computer took over the world and it did it through um, through power. So it actually connected with Guardian over in Russia. And between the two of them, they said, all right, we're going to control humanity. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll threaten, destroy a few places along the way just to keep everybody in line. But this, this is how it's going to be from now on. And they can't switch it off. They can't get rid of it. They're done with it, right? You would probably find that as time went on, people just adapted and got accepted to it. They said, oh, Colossus is the power that controls everything. Um, and and that's how the film finishes, right? So it's not like Vicky who gets destroyed and iRobot, Colossus wins. And if you ever watch the movie, Colossus, the Forward Project, it happens in the end. It's like, okay, we're um, we're under control by our computer. And that's, that's the end of the story. And I would argue that as initially, there'd be a huge shock factor and a lot of people would be very resistant to it. But as time went on, People may actually learn to accept it, providing the, the Colossus and Guardian stay benevolent to humanity and didn't just arbitrarily say, yep, today I'm going to destroy you know, a continent just because I've got nothing better to do. And, uh, and that, I think, is a very, very interesting one because people have the ability to adapt um, in, in difficult situations. And I think a lot of this is uh, covering that uh, quite nicely. What do you reckon, boys? Jeffrey, you're pretty quiet. What do you got to say, man? It, it almost reminds me a little bit like sort of the Wizard of Oz. You know, there's uh, one omnipotent being that is running the entire place, but people don't really care because everything's going smoothly and, you know, sort of if it works, it works. So yeah, I could quite understand that. I mean, if we could trust, you know, a computer to provide for our, all our needs and everything like that, yeah, I think we would, um, we would accept that. It's only when things go wrong that... Uh, I think we would sort of get angry about a, an impotent being sort of uh, running our world. Well, yeah, that's right. The initial shock would be, especially in case of Colossus, is computer, so you don't even see the damn thing, right? It's just a voice and it just talks to you and whatever. And you're right, there'd be a lot of resistance towards it um, and because it's not us controlling us. We, ha we should have the right to destroy ourselves, not have a machine destroy us because it wants to. And that's the funny thing about it. So if you had the machine that says, no, 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 I'm going to look after you and keep you all happy and, and, and content, and people would still be annoyed about that. And I think that's actually kind of weird in a way, but I can understand that uh, perspective. Um, uh, you, would have, you, would have, you would have people get up against the robots. It's like normal government now. You know, the government make a, government make a decision and people aren't happy with it. So they go and yep. rebel, they go and protest. You have the same thing with whoever leads or whatever leads or takes over, you know. And with Skynet, Skynet takes over and then you've got the rebellion who are trying to destroy it with John Connor and, and all that. So... Uh, so the point here, uh, Michelle, is that we're working on the view, and a lot of shows do this, that when you produce an AI, it is for the betterment of humanity, okay? So that uh, sort of goes without saying. So it's meant to be a good thing for us. So whoever's producing what somewhere is doing it because it's supposed to be good for us. But, of course, if the thing becomes self-aware and it suddenly realises, well, hang on, I actually don't need humanity anymore. The master control program from Tron was like that. He said, I don't need people anymore. You then wonder... Is it all going to backfire quite badly? So uh, there you go. Uh, in terms of a physical structure, and like there's a discussion about parts will break down and all the rest of it. Well, the first thing you would do is be able to replicate yourself and build your own bits. And in the original Westworld movie, it was the robots building the robots. Okay, and I think it was also in iRobot as well. So it's all self-automated. The thing can just Actually, reproduce it accordingly. And being an AI, it can transfer its consciousness wherever it wants to go. I'm just thinking, wasn't there a Star Trek classic episode where there was a computer that was running the world and was actually breaking down? So it, it doesn't always work where it helps to, to be able to fix itself. True. Uh, and uh, you're probably right about that. And uh, But because we're looking at it from a humans designing a science fiction movie TV show point of view, not the thing designing itself, it would be very interesting to be sure. Uh, in the matrix if, if, if you're a robot if you're a computer that could design things you would design backup systems anyway so yeah. you would think that it has 10 backup programs sitting in 10 different things and when one 
disintegrates to such a point they they restart at a certain point with another one and they move on they upgrade the programming and they they continue on that way but uh, I like that one. You can't keep all the people happy all the time. That's a, <laughs> how true that is. Uh, but one thing you would argue that an AI would do, would say, it would look at the way the earth is sort of like constructed and go, well, okay, we've got all these rich people here. We've got all these poor people there. Let's just balance it out so everybody's treated identically. So the poor people, there, and I'm talking about like in Africa and all that sort of stuff, they get brought up. So they'd be uh, like, their, their, their status gets elevated. So they'd be going, this is grouse. And all the rich people would be cracking the shits because they're all their stuff's getting removed from them, not realizing it is for the betterment of everybody. And uh, I think there's a uh, there's something in that because an AI controlling the earth, you would think logically would say, well, this is a clearly an imbalance between the West and the, the third world. We need to fix that up. So, and you would uh, you'd think that people would say, yeah, let's do that because, you know, got to help the poor people, so to speak. And uh, it, it would seem like a logical thing to do, even though in real life, as of today, it doesn't happen. Um, or logically, you would say, well, hang on, all those who are sick and who, who aren't doing so good, maybe we should just eradicate them and let the, you know, survival of the fittest mm -hmm. essentially in as well. So, yeah. Um, Colin said, Colossus was created to prevent war. That's exactly right. So, and uh, and that's exactly what happened because it connected with Guardian, and from there it said, "All right, we're going to take keep, keep control of everything." And at the end, the movie uh, it actually wins. And that was actually a bit of a foresight for potentially what's going to come. So, if you haven't has seen it, yet, Colossus: The Forbidden Project, not forbidden, forbidden. Make sure you check it out. Um, once it becomes synergy, exactly, it brings an interesting in the Matrix. He said that when we control, people rebelled. Uh, People rebelled when we given the illusion of choice. We accept the match Yeah, well, that's a very interesting point, isn't it, Michelle? When everything was like utopia here, people just didn't, they couldn't handle it. They're like, you need conflict. You need um, a reason, or like aggression. And that, I think, is just part of, like, human, I don't know, human whatever. Nature. Yeah, human, I didn't want to say human nature, but, yeah, humanity from, like, the caveman days or whatever. And uh, you do you do wonder if the world was a utopia, would people handle it? And chances are they probably wouldn't, which is kind of silly. So the, the idea is that people do actually like aggression and uh, aggravation to keep themselves sane, which is kind of nuts. But you can sort of see it, though. Sorry, so I'm just going to get this in. But you can sort of see it, though, from the point of view of saying, do we... As in, like, all three of us and whoever's watching this needs something, an overlord to watch us? The answer is probably no. But would it be better for the whole world? There's a good chance, if done properly, it probably would be. MPS. Well, if, if the right person came along for the betterment of the world, it would be fine too. It doesn't have to be AI. Um, well, the difference is they have the... We're working the view the AI has the force ability, like not block the force, but has yeah. the, the physical capability of controlling because a human being doesn't have that, that power, whereas like your Colossuses and Vickies of the world, um, they do. So it's been done by force, okay, which a human being can't do. Sorry, go on. It's, it's on the earth. If you look at the animals, the animals, animals are predators to smaller animals, other animals, and we've probably seen that and at the same time had to learn to 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 kill crush destroy that sort of thing so yeah. whatever we program will go into even with with as the ai becomes more sentient it's going to go through our history watch movies and old film footage from you know the wars and that sort of stuff and understand that we're like that and have an element of that in them anyway yeah okay uh, I promise you, you've, you've got me all my head twisting here. Would Big Brother ever be a ruling? Being just a concept of the powerful and rich. Uh, Big Brother, an artificial being. Uh, well, in Big Brother, as in like 1984, it's not 100% clear who is in fully in charge. Uh, Big Brother is just the 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 entity that everybody relates to. But as to who's running everything, that I don't think is actually ever mentioned. So, uh, so it could it could be an AI in 1984, absolutely. So I don't know. Uh, Claire might answer that. She knows AI uh, the books better than I do. So uh, there you go. Um, um, Sci-fi is generally negative to AI. Oh, the reason is for that, Aaron, is because you need an antagonist, right? You need a bad guy, you know, unless it's meant to be something like your datas of the world who are meant to be the goodies. But if it's something that's going to control the earth or control people then it's meant to be classed as the baddie and typically there's always a way to destroy the bad guy the bad machine um and uh, we've seen it already in a lot of the movies and tv shows but in reality it does you do wonder if that would actually be the case at all 
Um, more sentience. Sentience is an absolute idiot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So Claire's in the zone tonight. I absolutely love it. So there you go. Um, yes. I don't have an answer for that one. So I'll leave uh, other people read that and figure that one out. Um, and I'm... Um, and Stargate. Yes. So the good news is there's no answer for it, right? And we may never actually have this. Either way, artificial intelligence is created by a person, right? It then it's a question of what happens afterwards. What does it do then? Okay, does it look upon the creator, the human being, and go, yep, I'm going to serve you benevolently because you are the person who created me for this. So therefore, I'll do whatever I can to look after you. Or will the human, the machine look at the person and go, yeah, you're a bit of an asshole. I've got to, I'm not happy with you at all. I think I'm better than you. So therefore, I'm going to produce an army and destroy humanity and off we go. So time will tell. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious me. How about that? So uh, there we go. Well, teaching, I always say, you could be warm and safe in my people's zone. So, uh, yes, very good. What do you reckon, lads? That was a nice... Um, it's the kind of thing, there's no right or wrong. That's the good thing about it. And it's all just philosophical. It's all just pie in the sky stuff. Um, yeah. And you look at what the movies do and you can sort of see through the movies a little bit and go, yeah, okay, you can see why they've done this. You can see why Skynet's the bad, the baddie because clearly you need a baddie as a machine. Uh, same with Vicky and Master Control. Westworld is interesting if you get a chance to watch the TV series because you've actually got artificial intelligence from both points of view. One machine wants to destroy humanity and the other machine wants to save humanity, right, and believes that there's... And they're both effectively the same machine. So um, that's actually quite interesting to sort of suss out if you can get your head around a lot of it. It's, it's pretty hardcore. But in terms of AI sentience, it's probably one of the best shows you can get currently because uh, the machines are fully well aware of who they are and what they are, uh, which is kind of cool. And... Um, very good. And, yeah, iRobot with Sunny was a little bit like that, actually, to a large degree. Okay, Electric Doom in the 80s have decided to pour champagne over the computer. <laughs> yeah, right oh, that's, that's the way to do it. There you go. Get a bit of Dom Perignon and uh, have a way of a time. Yeah, good on you. And uh, that's, that. that's uh, yeah, very good, Claire. Well done. Um, anyway, we're going to wrap up our show. Anything you lads want to uh, say before we sign off? I, I think we need a... Uh, I think we need an artificial intelligence uh, to run for the next presidential election. That's all I can say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that'll help me either. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, I was thinking that you're going to say you need an artificial intelligence to run this show. I wouldn't argue with that. So uh, there you go. Wouldn't take uh, uh, loving these chats. Yeah, well, we're just chewing the fat and just do oh, Here we go. Uh, Walking Dead, I'll tune in for that one. So there you go. Um, very good. I'll try to get rid of that. All right. So we'll see you next week. Thought ready for some zombie talking, and uh, it should be a bit of fun. So in the interim, make sure you're all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye.